I think, first of all, just getting people to communicate their science is a wonderful step because it's actually getting quality information out there. Mm -hmm. And not only that, it's introducing the public to what a scientist looks like. Yeah. So if you Google image scientist, quite often what comes up is an old white man. But yeah. <laughs> it's stock turns, images, especially. Yeah, exactly. Um, but what I really hate is the stock images where they're just sort of pandering to what people think science is. So they're like, this is what people think science is. So let's make stock images, not of scientists as they truly are, but we'll have somebody, uh, we'll have a, 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 a biochemist examining like a model of DNA. And it's like, what are they looking at? They know what DNA, like they know what that is. Or like anytime there's chemistry, there's like bubbling liquids of various very bright fluorescent colors it's like that's not what chemistry looks like it's all just bland colors like that's not real exactly. Ugh, it just really bothers me <laughs> yeah i know a number of scientists who really dislike the um safety that is not shown in those images too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so hair not being back and covered mm -hmm. and things like that yeah or but they do have goggles on even if what they're doing doesn't require it because goggles Yep. That's science, right? Yeah. So obviously, scientists, I, I think you, you've hit something really key here, this whole like demystifying and personalizing of a scientist. So like, I know of like YouTube channels where like a PhD, a PhD student is like, this is what I do. And uh, that's it. And this is my lab. And this is what I did today. And uh, that's, that's it. That's what being a biochemist is. Or that's what being a physicist is. And I really, really like that because... It does a couple of things. One is um, it right it 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 <laughs> it takes the air out of those false image uh, the false imagery. But two, it also is like, hey, do you think this looks cool? You can do it. You mm -hmm. totally can. No one's gonna stop you. Do you want to be a biochemist? Go get a bachelor's degree and then go to a PhD and you'll be one. Right. That's it. And it, you know it kind of gives young people a preview of what it might be like. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you encourage uh, the students to do? So I think it's really important to figure out what their individual interests are. Mm -hmm. So that could be one approach. I do know a lot of people who take that approach, but another one could be breaking down science in a way that different audiences will understand it. Um, I think that any approach is appropriate so long as communication is the central aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So we're recording right now at Caltech. Mm -hmm. And one of the professors here, he does some really interesting work in biogenetics and he blogs about it. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely technical stuff, but he's gathering the attention of people within the field. And that's a very specific type of science communication, yeah. and it attracts a very specific audience. And I think that's an appropriate way to go, too. So it's really important to make sure that we're not restricting people and mm -hmm. saying, this is how you have to communicate. You have to communicate broadly or you have to communicate narrowly. Right. Because if you, if you take that approach, many people are going to be turned off by it. They're going to say... Well, that's not how I feel. That's not how I want to mm -hmm. communicate. So.